Hi, I'm Morten Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovish Channel. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to the Rovers Stoke YouTube channel. We're back for a match preview as Rovers made the trip to Bristol City. Another league game, another long trip, a 3pm kickoff on a Saturday, which we're all uh, a bit foreign to. So it's nice to be back on the 3pm. Shame it's not at home, but that can wait for next week. As you'll see, I'm joined by two people for today's preview. First, we'll start with Scott. How are we doing, Scott? Yeah, good. It's been a, been a couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, glad to be back on the channel and doing shows again. Good to have you on, and obviously Jack, who you'll get to know over the last few weeks, and becoming a regular face on here. Jack, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. It's, it's been a long week with the last result looming over. Us, but hopefully, we can put it back, put it back to normal on the weekend. Put it right. Yeah, it has been. Uh, we'll start with that result. Apologies to everyone. Feel free to skip on to the next bit. But uh, the last result, four 0 loss at Rotherham. I won't ask. Did Rovers deserve it? Because we all know what they deserved and that's nothing. But Scott, do Rovers bounce back from it in this game? That's the question I want to ask. Do we have the mentality? Do we have the squad to come back from this game and you know get a good result down at Bristol? I'd say get a draw, but the <laughs> word draw kind of escaped us now. So would we get a good result, we'll say, down at Bristol? You'd certainly hope so. I think, uh, I think it's all got to be about decision making and it, we, can't, we can't keep making the same mistakes as we have in previous previous games um, I mean there's there's no nothing you can really say about that last game it, other than it was shambolic <laughs> um, and any, anything anything that's up from that is an improvement and, and I don't think you can get any worse so I don't think they can be worse, so they've got to be better. No, I, I think if you're worse, you're probably, probably not going to have any fans left in that away in Baffles. Um, Jack, just one question about that Rotherham game, actually. What would you say the most concerning bit of that actual result was? I know you're on our midweek show uh, discussing the results, so if anyone's not checked that out, you know, over on the channel, really good video, really well received. But what actually... You know, what was the worst part of that game? Jack, I know there's a lot to choose from. I mean, it was really obvious that there wasn't much of a plan for when we had the ball. I don't know if I don't know if we're coached more on how's playing. We don't have the ball, but we had all that possession and we didn't really do much with it. We were sort of passing it around the back. No real sort of impetus, no real sort of threat going forward. But then aside from all of that, there wasn't there was also a lack of desire. You saw how the other one was sort of pressing us, forcing us into mistakes and that, that at the minimum, um, I want to see this weekend a bit of a reshuffle as much as we can with the squad we have and players going out there and at least trying and trying to get a result and fighting the battles that we weren't fighting against Rotherham. Yeah, I mean, we'll discuss uh, obviously the team coming up. We'll first look at the opposition. Obviously, Bristol aside that beat us 3 2 at Ewood earlier in the season. Uh, I think the one player we discussed off air before this show and the one player that's on everyone's lips in the Championship, Alex Scott. But the team full of quality we saw today were there. Tommy Conway, Naki Wells still can score goals. Uh, Andy Vyman, Semenyo, who's obviously been a bit of one of them players in the transfer rumour mill this week. Still at the club at the time of recording. We imagine he'll be there at the weekend. Scott, when you look at this Bristol side, should they really be doing better than they are in the league? You know, 17th, we saw them come to Ewood and I personally think they deserved it. You know, they deserved the win. Should they be higher up than where they actually are, languishing in basically the bottom quarter of the table? Yeah. Um, I mean, like you just said, you've just, you've just rhymed off a whole, a whole list of players that they've got that are very talented, very good at playing football, very good at scoring goals. And, it, it makes you wonder why why they're not getting as many results as they'd maybe hope. Um, I think, yeah, definitely they should be doing better with the talent and squad that they've got. Jack, obviously we spoke about Alex Scott before recording. Just how much of a talent is he, is he going to even be playing in this division next season? Um, it's, hard, it's hard to say, isn't he? Because he's a, he's a very young player. He's sort of just burst into the scene. I feel like he will be in the Championship maybe another season. Um, certainly a player to watch out for. Also, you mentioned Naki Wells. He seems to love a, 
goal against us. So I hope he stays off the score sheet as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, we, yeah, they came to us sort of early in the season. They were in a good patch of form. Obviously, it's gone a bit downhill since then. I think I think they're doing all right again now. So I, I think it'll be a really tough game away from home. Yeah, I agree. Actually, I think this is going to be. I just think it's one of them. Rovers have had a mixed result. I remember we beat them 2 0 when Johnson scored. Uh, one moment, Adam Armstrong, uh, not Adam Armstrong, Ben Brotherton scored, sorry, last season. And then we've got big 4 1 there before. It were always a mix. I remember going there under Coyle when we scored an own goal. I think it were uh, a definitely mixed place to go. One that Rover, one that I look out with Rovers and think I'd take a draw there. But like I said, what's the meaning of a draw? We're still waiting to find out. Now, what we'll do now, we'll head into our opposition preview. We spoke to Annie from the AH Robbins Talk YouTube channel. He discussed Bristol City, Alex Scott, Rovers, you know, his thoughts on Rovers, really good, knowledgeable person about Rovers as well to say it's not his club. So check that out now and then we'll go back into our preview. And as you can see, I'm joined by Annie from the AH Robbins Talk YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us, Annie. How are we doing today? Yeah, not bad. Good, good. Looking forward to Saturday's game? Yeah, for the first time in a while. Confidence going into a game. Um, and hopefully we, you know, put our performance and get the three points. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game. I think obviously the reverse fixture of 3-2 at Ewood to Bristol City. Uh, I think you outplayed us that day, really. You felt pretty, really impressed. I just wanted to focus on mainly the players to watch, you know, to kick us off. Who would you say the ones that we need to look out for on Saturday? Um, I'd say Antoine Semenyo uh, has been on pretty decent form uh, recently for City. Uh, there has been speculation about a move to Bournemouth uh, today, uh, but I think we should be fine in terms of keeping him for the weekend. Um, Alex Scott in midfield was outstanding at Ewood, uh, thought he was really good, and thought he, I think he will be one of the players who will uh, affect the game in whatever manner. And yeah, I think Nick Cal Naismith in midfield as well. Uh, been re really good recently in the Park and been complimenting him very complimenting Alex Scott, Matty James really well in the midfield. Yeah, um, I like your squad. You know, when you come and won that game at Ewood, like I say, I think you deserved it. Alex Scott, I were really impressed with in the middle. Uh, how would you sum up your season so far? Obviously, when you come to Ewood, that were on the back of uh, six game. Well, that was your sixth game on Bigton. A few losses after that, but it seems to be mixed form. How would you sum it up? Yeah, it's probably how I would describe it as well. It's uh, one of those games at Ewood was looked like we were really going to push for those playoff positions and really looked like we were challenging and progressing really well. And then after that, we kind of just fell off a cliff. Our form was terrible. I think it was one win in 13. It was really bad. And since then, a few, a few decent draws away from home. And then we've slowly started to pick up now. I think it's four unbeaten. Uh, we're slowly trying to uh, find our feet again. I do think the squad is good enough to finish in the top half of the championship and do feel like we will get closer to that uh, region than we will probably the bottom three. Yeah, I noticed, obviously, Cup win at Swansea midweek. Do you think that might have a positive effect for Rovers, the fact that you've played so recently and we haven't, even though I know we got battered last time out, so maybe, maybe you want to get back playing straight away when you've uh, lost in the manner we did? To be honest, I don't think the midweek game at Swansea will affect us too much because we just desperately needed to win at Swansea. We we needed momentum going into the into the league games because we have a couple of really important league games coming up now. Uh, we need to just we just needed to carry on that uh, good run against Birmingham where we played really well and scored more goals. Um, we just need to win at Swansea. We did that. Uh, so I think momentum going into this game will probably be more than the fatigue. And hopefully, you know, we don't show much fatigue. And even if we do show fatigue, I think we're fine, really, in terms of options off the bench uh, with Joe Williams. Um, we, have, we have some decent players off the bench uh, who can come in and just outright replace them. Uh, if we're for, for, uh, down a fullback, well, we have Jada Silva who can cover either side. We have... George Tanner, we have Mark Sykes who can fill in there. So I think we I think we should be fine. And yeah, with Sam Bell off the bench against Swansea was really good as well. Um so you know we have we do have options if we are 
it's tiring after 70 80 minutes i think we i think we should be fine yeah so obviously looking at rovers what have you seen of rovers this year have you been impressed i know obviously we had that game that we lost but have you seen anything else of us it's just ridiculous with rovers isn't it it's it's uh, it's either oh my god they've that they've, they've smacked on smack someone who I'd expect to be at the top, and then they lose four in the way rather than go, What is going on? Uh, it's ridiculous. And is it a stat that whenever you conceded first, you've never drawn or something? It's something along those lines. Uh, uh there's uh, just been two games we conceded first that we've gone on to lose. We've not drawn yet all season, uh, but we've won yeah, every game we're yeah. ahead. It's, it's, it's mental, uh, it's very, very, very inconsistent. A uh, bit, bit like us, but not as extreme. Um, I, I don't really know what to make of them because it's like, yes, you're in a decent lead position, but is that somewhat mitigated by the number of defeats and loss uh, and defeats and wins? It's like a bit ridiculous, not really normal uh, for any team. So, yeah, I'd say overall, John Dan Thomason has come in, taken over from Tony Mowbray. I think he's done a decent job uh, in terms of getting that squad into probably a top six place. Um, when that carries on, well, I don't. I genuinely don't know at this point. With that, the there's, about, there's about fifteen. There's about fifteen teams chasing your tail. It's it's ridiculous in the championship, um, and some teams even below that margin going for it. So yeah, and up until this point, I've been impressed with what John Goldsmith has come in and said, because uh, I thought uh, last season under Tony Mowbray it just stalled a bit. Um, it just went, just went a bit. A bit too stale, um, and I think you needed to take uh, advantage of Ben Burton Diaz while he was here, or he's going to be here for a bit. Um, so yeah, I think Thompson's done a decent job this season. Yeah, I can. I actually got that stat uh, incorrect there. Every time we've been behind, we've not won, and there were twice we were ahead, and uh, we ended up losing. So unfortunately, it's that way around. Uh, I just wanted a prediction now to finish us off for Bristol Rovers, uh, Bristol City versus Blackburn Rovers, not Bristol Rovers. I want to. Uh, I want to fend you in that way. What do you reckon? What score are we going for? Um, I think we will have confidence and I don't think Blackburn will, uh, quite frankly. And once... Uh, the, th- the thing with City is once we have confidence, we are a really good side. and We will match anyone in this league. Um, no doubts about that. And I think we will. Whether Semenyo starts... I think if Semenyo doesn't start, uh, it might be a bit of an issue. I'm going to go for a 2-0 City win. And normally, when I come on fan channels, I say, oh, I'm going to predict the City win because I'm, cause I'm um, biased. But I genuinely do think City probably are the favourites because our Ashton Gate record recently has been pretty decent. Um, and we are showing some good signs of improvement and a few t- tactical tweaks from Nigel Pearson as well. So, yeah, I do believe we're favourites. Uh, probably not what you, what you want to hear, but... I. Do you think we'll win two now? No, no, I think uh, our fans are expecting a tough game as well. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Just want to tell everyone where they can check you out if they want to come and watch some content. Yeah, you can uh, check me on AH Robbins Talk uh, on YouTube and at Annie Harris 5 on Twitter. Just push city content, match previews, match reviews, all the latest, all the latest news. Um, but yeah, I'm there on both, both platforms. Perfect. I'll leave everything down below for people to check it out and we'll head back into our preview now. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the game on Saturday and good luck for the season. Obviously, by the Saturday's result. Yeah, thank you very much. And there we have it. Thanks to Andy for joining us. Like I said in the video there, in the little snippet, you can go in the description below, check out his channel, give him a subscribe, give him a bit of support. Really good, talented, young content creator. So head over to his channel. So Scott, I wanted to discuss a few talking points. You know, we'll do the predicted at time in a separate video. But in this one, I wanted to discuss Dylan Markande. Obviously, none of the Rovers front four made that much of an impact at Rover and probably Bradley Dak were the only one who'd come out with any credit under his name, really. Is this finally the time to give Dylan Markande a start for Rovers? We've discussed it a million times on this channel over the last few weeks and the last month or so. Should he be given that chance when no one else has really took one? Um, yeah, for me, I think, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, like you say, we've, we've spoken about it for the past, you know, three, four, five weeks. And it 
it seems to be uh, one of the, the the hot topics that we're talking about, and it just never seems to happen every week. Uh, and I think you know when none of the forward players are making much of an impact, you've got to you've got to look to to somebody to fill that fill that role and just try and make an impact. And I think you know Dylan Markandy has shown shown more than what he's capable of with the under twenty ones and the cup. Um, I think. He's more than more than ready to start start a game in the championship, and you know, on the back of on the back of a, a really bad loss, you'd you'd like to hope that you know just do something different and give him a chance, see what he can do from the start. Yeah, I'm in that boat. I think he deserves a go. Jackie, you agreed on it. On my candy, should he get that start? Because obviously. You know, Ben Brewerton yeah. Diaz will be back, which guarantees a role in that squad. Bradley Deck will probably yeah. start. It's probably that striker and that right mid role. So, should Mark Andy take up one of them positions? For me, yes, but I, I, I don't, I don't see it happening. He played again in the in the twenty ones, I think, and that's always seems to be a sign that yeah, JDT might not, might not start these players. I think, I think if I think it's not him, I think Dolan should come in as well, um, just to sort of. They need a bit yeah. more energy in that in that front line for sure, and I thought as much as I love Ryan Hedge, as I thought him and Gallagher were woeful in that game against Rotherham. Um, so for me, both out, Dylan and Mark and Day both in. But yeah, yeah, I agree with uh, both of that. So we'll move on to the centre back debate. And obviously, although I don't think it's much of a debate, so I'll maybe change the question a bit. How big, Jack, do you think the absence of Dom Hyam is obviously confirmed? There's out Scott Wharton's back, so. We imagine it'll be Ayala and Morton, but just how big of a miss is it, you know, having Dom Iam out for three to four weeks now? I think that, I think it's absolutely huge because he's been an absolute rock for us. Um, he's been our best centre-back this season. And it's it's a bit of a surprise to me. You'd have expected it to be Daniel Ayala who was pulling up with the injury. And now that now that, well, now that that Haim is out, I'm not too worried now that Wharton's come in. It'd be nice to see how he does. But... At the same time, we've now got Wharton and Ayala in the back two, and they've both got um, histories of injury. And I just think if if one of them goes now in the next this week or the next week, then it really is looking troubling for us. But it would be nice to see how Wharton does. I think he, it's quite unfortunate that he's been sitting on the bench this season. Uh, I think it's a close run thing between those three centre backs. I remember last season, Mowbray opted for Wharton. And Ayala was on the bench, so it's obviously not much in it. So I'd like to see how he does. Yeah, Scott, are you in the same, you know, the same boat as Jack? Do you agree about how big of an absence Dom Hyam is? Because I think, you know, he's had his bad games. I think we often were probably his worst game actually. But how big of a miss do you think he's? Do you think he's a massive honour? Do you think maybe Scott Wharton can come in and do an adequate job to fill his boots? Yeah, I think like like Jack said, it's huge. Um... I mean, we all, we, everyone rates Don Hyam, and uh, I, I think I think Scott's a, a really talented defender. Um, but as we all know, you know Scott's not been hitting his top form recently. Um, I think you know should should maybe maybe if Scott doesn't start, maybe Ash Phillips will start or. You know, it's maybe a good chance for Ash Phillips to get some minutes, um, but either either one of those and more than careful of stepping in for Don Hyam. Yeah, so now we come on to the final bit of the show, the, uh, the predictions. I don't think any of our predictions went too well in last week, Sean. I don't think anyone did in the comments, but let's go for it. I'll start with you, Jack. What score and who are we going to score in the uh, Bristol game? Um, I'm certainly not going in as hopeful as last time, but at the same time, I can't predict anything other than a Blackburn win so I'm going to go Rovers 2-1 and we'll go Diaz and Dolan Who are you going for Bristol? Um, not Naki Wells uh, we'll go Semenya Semenya Scott your prediction? Uh, I'm also going 2-1 uh, but like Jack said earlier on in the video Naki Wells always likes a goal against us so I'm going to go for Naki Wells and uh I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna go for Diaz and well I'll 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 make it seem optimistic and I'll say Mark and Day. <laughs> so two two one. So I'll go for one 0 Rob. It's a scrappy one 0 win away. I'll go for uh, Harry Pickering to score the goal. So let us know down below your predictions. A bit out there, striker. It worked last time. Uh, 
a bit out there scoring, but we'll see how it works out. But thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in, subscribing, liking, supporting the channel. I put it on Twitter earlier that, you know, we've put out over a video a day since Christmas. The support's been incredible. Please keep it coming. We love doing all this content. But until then, hit like, hit subscribe, do all that stuff. You know how to do it. You've watched YouTube long enough. You've watched us long enough. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.